Hey, hey, what a stressful time. <laughs> Dealing with technology for the last 45 minutes. 45 minutes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hope everybody's doing good today, though. It's Thursday, so we're here answering your questions. Um, I've already had folks emailing me worried about the live session, but we're here. Um, so I know some of y'all have questions. There was some folks asking about bat sizes, different things like that. So we'll go ahead and give you all a, a quick minute to type in the chat box or raise your hand and start off with those questions. We've had a great week. It's hot in Georgia. Yep. Folks still joining in. Still folks joining. Questions, bring them on. Another one, here we go. How do you want to know? Right back to it. Yeah. Right back to it. Well, me and Brian hit some, um, some big dudes last weekend. Yeah, we had a couple guys that uh, go in Division One and one eligible to get drafted this year. So, got to see a little bit of different talent. Big through. dudes. Yeah, huge. Big. Six foot seven. One of them was. I coach high school girls. What size and weight would be helpful? Um, anywhere in the 31, 32, 33-inch range um, would be what I would go with. That's going to be around – uh, 37, 38, 39 ounces. You can go heavier, but you really just kind of want to match the camwood length to the length of their average yeah. game bat size. Yeah, if you've got an average size throughout the whole team, I'd get kind of two sizes around the area if you want to get multiple bats. Most of our softball high school players are swinging um, 31 and 32s. Yeah. I don't see many of them swinging 33s. Not yet. Not yet. Some of the older ones, but not yet. That's always a good question. Bat size always gets us. Um, a lot of times folks will get the bat and they'll still say it's too heavy. But it's really not too heavy. It's really just making you learn those new mechanics. Yeah. That's what it's doing. It's heavy if you try to swing the whole bat. Yeah. Try to move in the right area, it's going to be a lot easier to swing. Yes. Um, speaking of size, though, talking about kind of what the email was referring to, size, a lot of times people, especially when we were growing up, we heard it a lot. I mean. Mm -hmm. Got to get big, lift a lot, bunch of weight, get big as you can get. Um, bigger guys are going to probably get looked at better, more. Um, possibly the same with softball players, too. And me and Brian, over the last few weeks, have kind of been talking size, size matters. I mean, obviously, if you're a bigger dude, you're going to number one, get more looks. Number two, yeah. if the ball hits your bat, it is probably going to go farther because of the fact it's so uh, bigger. Yeah. Now, if I have, let's say, a Trey Sykes that is – that doesn't swing like Trey, but say yeah. he swings like – I mean, say I got a Trey Sykes and I got a Jonathan, and Jonathan has a faster swing. Trey just has yeah. a big, long swing. Okay. You're going to see more pop out of the smaller, faster, more consistent swing than you're going to see out of that bigger bat. Yeah. Um, or the bigger guy. And so a lot of times we get stuck on the actual size, like how big is the person? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I wasn't necessarily big, but I was strong. Yeah. I was fast. Yeah. Um, I was quick. I could move. Um, I had really good hands. I was still a good player, still able to compete with those big guys. Yeah. Size doesn't have anything to do with it. No. I mean, like you said, I mean, size as far as looks goes, I think size reflects – when scouts are there, is potential. Yeah. But if you see a guy there that's smaller, but, I mean, better bat speed, uh, all these things have better mechanics, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you can prove yourself and show yourself, size to me doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can 
there's a lot of people that have gone professional that have shocked the world based on their size, just what they do. I know Boston Red Sox had a uh, uh, Pedroia was there. Pedroia, uh, and all them. You got Altuve now. Um, I mean, Francisco Lindor is another one. I mean, real mm -hmm. skinny, shortstop, not a big dude. Um, I mean, there are small guys that can get to the big leagues. Now, I mean, Tony Gwynn. Take Tony Gwynn. He wasn't a big dude. Yeah, he's small. Yeah. Man, he's skinny. Little bitty dude. And, I mean, I watched a video the other day, him talking about kind of, I mean, there was nobody on his team that was going to work harder than him. Yeah. There was nobody that was going to outwork him. He was not a power hitter. Mm -hmm. He knew that the worst thing he did was hit home runs and drive runners in. Because he didn't drive the ball into the gap. He just made contact. So he maximized what he did the best. Smaller guys, again, you're not necessarily going to not hit the ball out of the park, but you can't be focused on that. You can't be a small guy and be upset because I'm not as big as this one. I can't hit the ball as far. Or be a small guy and be trying to hit the ball as far as a big guy. Mm -hmm. You just got to do what you do. Yeah, you got to have really quick hands, and you got to run into that ball at full speed. Smaller guys, a lot of times, can move fast a lot quicker yeah. than a better body than control those, than those bigger guys. So, the faster you move that bat, the more speed it has when it hits that ball. Mm -hmm. That's where I mean your real pop and your real power is coming from. Yeah. Catching that ball out front. The bigger guys have the upside of being able to reach farther, so they can get more extension if they do it right. Mm -hmm. Trey's going to hit more home runs because he gets more extension because his arm is just flat longer than yeah. So, a lot of times the size of the players – I mean, I don't look at size a ton. No. I mean, when I see it, it's, I mean, it's impressive. But we're not looking at size. We're looking at mechanics. We're looking at um, fundamentals and overall how they swing the bat. Another one here speaking about bat size. On the one hand, trainer, any reason one – should not grip the actual end of the bat as opposed to the grip of the bat. For me, sometimes feels better when connected to the hold, the actual end. Thoughts? Um, I mean, I'm I'm not necessarily going to tell you not to. I mean, yeah. it's, you're just going to have more whip. That's yeah. all you're going to have. As long as you can hang on to the bat and do the drill, I mean, you can hold it at the very, very – hold it flush, bottom of the bat if you want to. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's oh, yeah. folks that grab their game bats and they wrap their pinky around the knob. Mm -hmm. Their pinky's not even on the handle. It's on the ground at the bottom yeah. of the knot. So, again, if you can master the drill like that, that's fine. Me and Brian were in here the other day about to cut his finger off, cutting up a watermelon, and so he couldn't hold his hand on the bat. So he was doing drills the other day with these these three fingers down here, just like this. Yeah. And you find out that the bat is whipping more mm -hmm. because it's got less on it. Yeah, I'm not holding got it less with of a hand on it. I'm not holding it with the top of my hand, holding it with the bottom where it needs to be when I pull. You have less control of the barrel, so yeah. the barrel's going to just fly through that zone. Yeah, that's not an issue at all. That's fine. And based on the question above that, um, okay. I would say most of the stuff you need to do is off tee, especially until they start getting used to the bat, how it feels um, when they swing it and stuff, because you'll run into when you get into live pitching. Uh, getting this bat, it's going to feel different for them when they're swinging. I would hate for you to go straight into BP with it and a bat crack or something like that. This yeah. is a training bat. It's not really – you can use it for BP, but it's not really for BP. It's for training. So, Well, I mean, we, we take – I mean, we've literally watched these bats. We've taken kids from ground zero. I yeah. mean, no swing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And we use the bat to teach them a base. You've got to teach them the foundation of how the swing functions. Once they understand that, I mean, all that's done off the tee. Once yeah. they understand that, then we kind of may start moving the ball around. Mm -hmm. We may start going in and out. We may start changing location, trying to help yeah. you feel your hips a little bit more. Still working off the tee, but getting you a little closer to what's going to probably happen when the ball starts moving yeah. in different locations. Then we go into front toss. We did this with a kid yesterday that's 11. And, I mean, he was – again, it's tough. He's hit off the tee with us, nothing but the tee, really, for like a year. Mm -hmm. And – um, we moved into front toss with the two-hand trainer. And you could see, even then, the bad habits when that ball starts moving. Sometimes they get it right. But the bad habit of this right here coming too soon, yeah. that starts creeping back in just because they feel the weight of that bat and they're trying to hit the ball hard yeah. instead of just being quick. When the ball's on the tee, they don't really feel like there's no resistance. There's nothing trying to blow you away. Yeah, Ball starts moving and they get defensive rather than – Well, they try to get the point of contact. Yeah. And 
what we've been really trying to explain to a lot of our kids is we don't know when the point of contact is mm-hmm. going to happen when that ball starts to move. Mm-hmm. So we really have to just feel ourselves when we see that ball approaching, work past it, and then let our swing play. If we keep thinking about that point of contact happening, that's that forcing the barrel is mm-hmm. going to happen a lot. We're going to start feeling that sword swoosh motion going yeah. to the left over through the ball straight. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Any other questions about bat size or program issues? Any issues you're seeing in the drills? Maybe in game. Like we got some new folks in here today. Welcome in if this is your first time. Um, if you've already here's some popping up. If you've already done the 10-day basket challenge, all American part one and part two, what do you recommend do now? Maintain the gains that have made and make even more gains. Continue to use Cam Wood and work all T and soft toss. Yes, you continue to try to improve on what you've done. I mean, I know speaking from past experience, I didn't know about Cam Wood. I didn't I didn't know about the program. There was no such thing. Um if I would have known about the program, I would have probably followed it until I saw my results. Mm-hmm. But I would have wanted to get into more of the training that I went through, like yeah. the game type training. Mm-hmm. I mean, front toss with the mindset of, I mean, maybe setting up a count, 2 1 count, 2 0 oh count, picking out your zone, being a little more selective with the pitches that you're swinging at. Yeah. Um, I mean, just really, I mean, mastering the drill mm-hmm. would never leave my mind. Yeah. Every day I would try to be better at the drill today than I was yesterday because yeah. all that's going to do is improve your muscle memory. So, I mean, as far as what do you do next now you've been through the whole thing, I mean, I, thank, congratulations. Yeah. What a what a job well done. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you've seen a ton of improvement. And, we, I mean, we highly recommend stick with the drills. Find a way to take those four drills and create your own little training program. It's not necessarily a training program at this point. It's now a training regimen. Yeah. It's now, I mean, my workout schedule. This well, is what yeah. I have to do to maintain. I mean, think about some of the drills we do. Um, me and Jonathan have just started doing this a little bit lately. Is when we go into that front toss, we do the drills through front toss. We do just two handers with the mindset of no legs, seeing if we can keep our hand on that path and let that ball travel. Um, you're gonna your kid's gonna really find out how good they are at keeping their hands on that line and in that zone. And really how small that zone is. Even though it's 18 inches and I'm trying to get that barrel through that zone, it's really small. It's those first 18 inches right off the front of that mm-hmm. plate. And a lot of kids try to get in the zone a little early before that and a little late after that, and it makes a huge difference in their result. Yeah, and I mean, if my shoulder's path. in line with the front of the plate, I mean, mm-hmm. and this is – this right here, are, I mean, it's a line that I'm trying to stay in. Kids are trying to hit that ball, like, way out here. Yeah. And the two-hander, no feet, no shoulders, I mean, it's been proven to me. Yeah. watching it over the last few weeks, doing it with these kids, doing it ourselves, and just continually working on it, it really helps you understand where that zone is. Mm-hmm. Not this, I mean, the strike zone, too. Yeah. It yeah. makes you take pitches because you're letting them travel farther, and they get farther in the zone, and now they're lower. Now yeah. it is a ball. Mm-hmm. Now it's a little bit outside. I ain't going to be able to get to that. I can't yeah. get to it. So it's really going to do a lot more than just help them feel their path to the ball. It's going to mm-hmm. help them feel what balls I should attack and what balls I should not attack. And it's also going to help. I, I know when I, me and Jonathan do it, when I do eventually start adding my legs to it, I understand that I don't need to do drive and rotate off that line. I can let everything release there, boom. Just let my hand finish me around. I don't have to worry about all this big movement a lot of kids want to try to get yeah. before and after my swing. All I need is right here as quick as I can, boom. Nip, the ball flies off yeah, the bat. It does. It and does. It, it, it's, I mean, we surprise each other when we do this because, I mean, we've been out of it for a little bit, but we've consistently worked well, through I it. I mean, I go back to, I mean, like, I yeah. remember the first time I ever took exit velocity off the tee. I was like a sophomore in high school. It was at Valdosta State. And, dude, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> because, again, I was trying to swing as hard as yeah. I could. I was trying to crush this ball. And I, I didn't, I mean, I didn't just do what I'd been taught. Stay loose, nice and comfortable, and just. Now the ball. Yep. Now the ball. Loose and quick. Let the barrel whip. And kids deal with that now. X velocity is so much more of a thing that they hear about. Mm-hmm. All of them, a lot of them, I would think, go to the plate with it in their mind in a sense that they hear about it a lot. Trying to go to the plate. Yeah. Do real fast with their bat and hit the ball hard off the bat. And it's slowing them down because they're not really understanding the swing. They're just trying to get bat to ball. Yeah. And there's so much more to it than that. Oh, yeah. Another one here. I've got a taller player. 
um, that has a long stride, about six eight. Woo! If we use the T as reference for her front foot plus her, she's six foot eight and she's a her girl. That girl that can get it long ways. You got some power. Long ways. Being uh, the sweet spot or the sweet part of the hitting zone, most of the students, I think, what do you recommend? Move her back. Um, yes, use the T as a reference. For the longer folks, I would say you can probably get away with leaving the ball a little farther out front. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't necessarily – I mean, again, it's like I was just saying a while ago, longer kids are going to have more extension than somebody like me. I'm six foot. Yeah. So I've all, that's all I got. Six foot eight, she's going to have, I mean, this much more, this much more, maybe right in here somewhere, more extension towards the pitcher. So her barrel can catch that ball farther out front. For the longer kids, I mean, I know watching Trey hit, that's what he shot for. He knew if I could catch it out front, my power's going to shut. Mm -hmm. So he tried to catch all of the balls out front. It backed his zone up when he was late. It wasn't so deep in his stance. Yeah. It was a little, like, off his front foot. Mm -hmm. And so now you'll see him do the drills, and the tee will be right off of his pinky toe here or maybe just a hair in front mm -hmm. because he's got more extension past the ball. Yeah. Some kids, if they're having trouble really getting extension, will move it farther out yeah. to make them feel that yeah. extra reach. you got to have this that space created here. Yeah. You don't want to feel that elbow kind of lock in right here and kind of my hand rotate around and have yeah. a lot of bend. Yep. You want it to accelerate and create a lot of space in here when you get through the ball. Yeah, six foot eight, that girl's got some potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd back her off the tee a little bit. And I'd, I'd do this too because we noticed this with those guys we hit with the other day, real big, tall guys. Um, you can also get farther away from the plate. Yeah. One you got longer reach that way too. Yeah. One-handers and two-handers. Don't make that tee feel like you're having to go golfing. Yeah. It's going to really make her want to get into the shoulder. Yeah. And we don't want to feel that. We want to feel a nice, good, horizontal bat path down with a pull of the handle so yeah. that bat flattens out and goes flat back up the path, mm -hmm. creating that good backspin. Um, yes, yeah, a ton of improvement for my 10-year-old son. He's a walking Camwood advertisement at every <laughs> tournament. I love it. Yeah, I love it. I'm telling you, man, the kids that get into this and grind with it, I mean, they see it. They see the results. Their confidence shoots to the roof. Six foot eight inch. Oh, stride. Okay, I'm with you. I'll bet say, woo. Oh, um, careful on her stride. Don't let her get too far wide. Um, if we get too far wide in our stride, we lose our lower half. We don't really have any good fire in that backside out of our lower half. So um, make sure that she feels athletic. One way to kind of help, help her feel where she needs to be is having load, stride, load, and pause when that foot hits the ground. Mm -hmm. and ask her, if, if, could you drive your knee if I said go? Because yeah. if you can't drive your knee from a dead standstill, then you really didn't load correctly. You got too far. Yeah, yeah. You let your weight drift. Um, something happened in that stride yeah. to cause you. I mean, again, if you have a curveball, it's going to cause a delay in your swing. Mm -hmm. And if you see it early enough, you should be able to pause and get it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to be out here doing like I used to because I didn't understand what you did. Yeah. So. Keep my feet in a good position. You have any Campbell coaches out here in Los Angeles? We were actually just out there a few weeks ago. Yeah, we were. Um, and we we're planning to yeah. come back. I, we were talking to our guys over there uh, um, when we were there in May. They they talked about wanting us to come back in August. August, yeah. So Orange stay County, tuned. Yeah. Orange County. We're stay out there tuned. In Orange County. Um, it is possible that we can beef it up a little bit more this time. We'll have a little bit bigger time to plan for it. Last time it was a real quick notice. I said you. I know you, and I emailing. I, okay, Evan, I remember you, brother. I do, I do. Okay, um, we'll be in touch. I'll email you back, and we'll kind of um, talk through some different ideas. But um, yeah, again, we were we were in uh, where where'd we go? Orange County. Santa Ana. Yeah, Santa Ana. Santa Ana. And I uh, hit with some dudes over there. Um, we are we have been in talks with Trey the last few weeks, um, possibly getting ready to start the Camwood certifications. We're trying trying to line all that stuff up. Um, but once that gets going, be ready for that as well. Mm -hmm. Our South of LA. Yep, we were right there close. We weren't mm -hmm. far. Right there close. And, yeah, if y'all ever um, also want to get some kids together in y'all's area and get enough kids, contact us. We will come to you uh, to do some of these camps and stuff. Because um, that's, I mean, that's what, how we end up in L.A., um, they want us to come out there. They had six or seven kids kind of paid for us to come out there, and we we gave them 
like 24, 25 hours worth of worth of time. Good, good information stuff they didn't get with what they had. Mm -hmm. A lot better with it being hands on. I'm on the board for Encino Fast Fit Softball. Good deal. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot you an email this afternoon. Um, uh, I mean, kind of speaking on that too. I mean, if we if if you have a team, team of players, 12, 13, 14 players, and I mean, say that that team is struggling a little bit, mm -hmm. okay, kind of on the weight. We talk about the weight. Yeah. Okay, that is the team I'm looking for right there. Yeah. That's the one that I want to spend two or three days with. Because if those kids could figure it out, those kids would have so much fun at this game. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, if they're on the way, they do they do know what it feels like to win. Yeah. They also know what it feels like to lose. Yeah. And they know the difference. If they could understand how to win, you score more runs, you win. Yeah. The only way to score more runs is to out-hit them. Yes, they can play bad defense and you can still beat them, but if you out-hit them, you're going to beat them. Facts. Well, so, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, a lot of this, I feel like a lot of the Camwood system, it teaches you a lot about how your swing functions. But if you really take that a step further and really think about the approach now I can have at the game and at the box and in the box and all this other stuff, it helps what he's talking about as far as scoring runs, knowing how to play the game. I know now if I have the opposite field approach, I can cover everything in when it comes to the play. I know that if based on my result, if I see a ball down to the shortstop, I'm using too much of my top hand. I'm rolling over the ball. I can make that adjustment now and make adjustments in the game so I don't let that little bit of failure, that little ebb instead yeah. of the flow, take me from being 0 for 3 for the day and 2 for 3 because now I'm able to make adjustments and because I know how my swing functions. I know where to go. You said this yesterday yeah. on the way to lunch. We were talking. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, if you could go to the plate your first bat of the game and say you roll over to the shortstop, yeah. And as soon as that ball hits my back, yeah. I mean, as soon as it hits your back, before you even come out of the box, you know exactly, gosh, my top hand was already here. Yeah. I didn't even let it release. I for, just held on to the back. Or, it, or if you want to break down even further, knee hip hands. Yeah. My hands were ahead of my lower half. Exactly. I got to make an adjustment and fire my knee first. That's yeah. it. Now you're yeah. now you're excited to go back to it. Yeah. Because now you know how to fix it. Yeah. I mean, gosh, somebody, y'all, I'm telling more, you. Yeah, a lot more It was so tough as players stuff. coming up. I mean, we knew how to fix stuff. I mean, in our own mind. Yeah. But, Brian, you were saying this yesterday. You were you went off your eyes. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't have a lot of training as far as how it functioned a lot. Uh -huh. I lot, relied on a lot of my feel with my body, and uh, I really had to trust my eyes when I was struggling. Um, I always felt like if I didn't, I felt away from the ball a lot, a lot mm -hmm. of rotation up here. But what a lot of it was, I think, to me, was I was very <laughs> – I would live and eat slept in the gym. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of muscle mass and a lot of strength, and I tried to use that more than what we the did. looseness, the, the speed. speed. Yeah, mm -hmm. all my speed was lost, and my my bat in the zone was probably more like this than it being those eighteen inches, which I what I needed. Um, and I think it helped when I concentrated more on my eyes and let my hands just go. I didn't rely on my muscles anymore. I relied on here and just having quick hands, mm -hmm. and I would always end up doing better. Um, but Jonathan had a whole different because he had well, a little bit of idea of how it felt. I had very, very good understanding in a sense of the hands. Yeah. I knew how the hands work. Mm -hmm. And I'd always I'd, I'd learned it early, mainly because my coach told me, and then he would through lessons he would help me see that my hands were good. Yeah. If you would trust your hands and be loose and just be quick with your hands, you're gonna be fine. And I all of my really good years, I mean the years that I was hitting over three hundred. I mean, I attest that to the fact that I was really comfortable and I had no fear about where this was going to go. Yeah. I mean, if you threw it in the zone and it was a fastball early in the count, I got you. Mm -hmm. Got you. Because I could get my hands to it. And I didn't have a lot of power, but it's because I didn't understand the lower half. Yeah. All I knew was hands. And I'm trying to be more powerful here. So when I get out, yeah, it's because I was trying to create power the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And so if kids, I mean, 11, 12, 13 years old, 14 years old, 15, whatever, could fix that at that age, and they can. They can. Yeah. They can. I'm telling you because we see it, folks. It changes the game that you're watching. It absolutely changes the game you're watching. Well, going back to why we, what our title was today about size doesn't matter. In our camps through here, we've been having competitions from eight years old all the way up to thirteen years old. Yeah, thirteen year old. And we eight -year -old. have we have eight year olds competing against thirteen year olds with consistency 
and barrel speed and all this kind of stuff in these competitions and get to the end. They may not always win doing because the weight they're younger. Shift drill, doing yeah. the pike drill, yeah. doing all of the yes. drills that we do. So yeah. are they too young? No. They can do it. Yeah. It's all about how you teach them, how you progress them, and when you deliver that information to them. Because, I mean, for example, I've watched you with Carl. You stayed on his hands for a while. Yeah. And, I mean, you got to because they're young. Yeah. They don't need to know power. I mean, that's one reason that my coach really never taught it to me is because I was always just kind of small. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, again, I wasn't going to get a lot of extension. I mean, I didn't understand lower half. We were just a rotational guy. All yeah. I knew was just rotate the hip, be quick with my lower half, fire my hip, let my hands go. I didn't know about the knee. So, I mean, young kids, they can do it, but they have to be given the information at the right time. You can do it too soon and mess them up. The, so, di the difference you're going to see with the younger kids compared to the older kids is my attention span. Yeah, you ain't got you know I mean? I, can't, I couldn't go into the whole thing with Carl because he's eight. Okay, He could focus for a small amount of time on this specific thing, and I had to make sure I focused on that amount of time I had with him on that specific thing until he was good enough at it where I knew that he could think about something else and still maintain his hands. Now I can go into my weight shift knowing that he can have this feeling naturally and go into my weight my weight shift and focus on that for that little bit of time and let his hands just react the way they're supposed to. Yeah. And then and then continue to add over time when everything gets more and more consistent until now it's got a full swing and now he doesn't have them he doesn't his attention span's not here anymore. Now it's increased and now he can go through the whole thing yeah. in I would say 60, 70 reps and go through one handers, two handers, weight shift, pipe, full swing. I mean today we and like you say, we do the competition today. Mm -hmm. Basically, the whole competition was you had 15 seconds to do each drill and get a good result. Yep. And, I mean, you saw a lot of them go two, three, four swings on the one-hand drill. They wouldn't get it because they're not thinking about the right stuff. They're doing they're their old habits. They're not trying to make, not trying make adjustments. We're yep. not making the adjustments. Mm -hmm. Then Carl comes up here, eight-year-old, and there was a handful of other eight-year-olds too. Yeah. As well as the older kids. Mm -hmm. But Carl comes up here and, I mean, right through them, one or two swings apiece, boom, 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 full swing, boom, line drive out of the park. Done. Yep. Done. Just like that. And his head never leaves the tee. I mean, he's not worried about all this. I mean, we told him right off the bat at a young age, this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter at all. And that's what Where you the got, ball yeah. goes does not matter. Mm -hmm. The pitcher is going to dictate that. Yeah. You've got to deliver the bat mm -hmm. the right way. Any other questions? I still see that one. We're going to come to Omaha. I'd love to do that. Call we talked about series. that this year, yeah. Yeah, we talked about that the other day. So that, I definitely would love to. Because, or especially early in those – First couple of days, the tickets are a little bit cheaper. So we're able to – yeah, I would, I would love to go to Caldwell Series. I know the last half is better because you get to actually see the – I'm curious to know if any of you guys have seen the uh, – if you paid attention to the swings that you've watched. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you know. Knowing what you know. What what, you, how's the I swings mean, are looking? Tell me your thoughts. What yeah. do you see? What bat path do we look – do we see? Camwood T set up uh, uses. We should have some videos coming yes. out. Yes. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the drill pro T, James. Um, I know we're, do, we're doing a program revamp, um, adding some new things, and the T setup is going to be in that. Um, I know we shot some videos talking about setup and how it should look compared to my front foot. Yeah, program videos are in there. Um, in there. Program videos are up. The new one. The new ones are up. Um, the T explanation is not in there yet. Not in there, okay. It will be, though. Yeah, we're getting um, them in there. T explanation will be in there. Uh, the Drill Pro T, but the main thing to understand on that is the location, the red mm -hmm. and yellow. Know the difference between those. Always turn the logo facing the hitter, basically where they can stand there and read it left or right. Um, and then put the insert in the red if they're a righty and the yellow if they're a lefty. Start from there. And if he's having trouble with footwork, I mean, sometimes you got to break it down elementary, okay? We have to have – I like to say, especially with the young kids when I'm working, got to check my feet, make sure I have a good, firm base, check my hand set up, make sure I'm good and set, and then my eyes staying down on the ball. Um, I know you said something about junk, bad feet. That was Martin. I don't know if that was for the same thing. Uh, oh, maybe Distance, not. too. My girls have – Been crowding. Crowding the plate, yeah. <laughs> Um, that is also in there. I know that's mentioned in uh, day one of the new program video, talking about the tee setup as far as how far away, how far apart you grabbing a tee. 
think Brian's grabbing one right here. Yeah, we'll show this right here. Let me turn my computer around. We had issues with our cameras today too, guys. What a day it's been. We've been shooting in bows too. Been shooting in bows. Your season's coming, all you folks. Uh, this is insider tea. Talk about that setup. I'll, I'll grab a couple of things. Yeah. If, if somebody's having trouble with um, lining themselves up as far as knowing that it's an outside fish, inside fish, all that stuff, we have our little tea set up here where we actually put it down on the foot on it and really move that ball where we want it on that outside corner. And then that way, kind of, you know kind of where your box is going to be and how that's going to be set up. You don't want to be crowding the plate in here. because You want it outside, okay? So I want to make sure, one, that my front foot, let's say big toe, but anything off the front foot right here is where I want it. I don't want it inside that front foot. That's going to get me to get my barrel in the zone too early, get back here and get that barrel around. I really want to feel my front foot lined up with the tee. Okay, you see I have a good space in here. All right, and then this is kind of how we will we'll kind of be set up. I mean, you don't want it to feel like it's a middle pitch because if it is closer to me, you said they're getting crowded, you're going to see a lot of kids wanting to go with that shoulder, but they, they don't feel like they can get their hands inside. And you don't see a lot of this kind of bat path too. Yeah. That's what's yeah. going to cause a lot of flares. Yeah, and we don't want that. So make sure it's outside, even with the one-hander. If you have to tell them <laughs> to get closer because you see them try to reach, that's different. We can make adjustments there. But I, hate, I would hate to see that front shoulder pull out because they think the ball is too close in the middle. Okay, So really try to feel that and then just feel myself staying aside nice and easy going through the zone. Okay? Yeah. But I mean, that's kind of the setup. And I talk about a lot with kids as far as my feet go. How, if people have bad feet, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. But me and John like to say that we have like sandbags so or weights sitting on top of our hips and yeah. we're down in our legs. Okay, besides that, the next thing that's got to be tight, especially on my lower half, is my core. Okay, because if I have good legs and not a good core, you're going to see a lot of this happening with my thing. fishing, with my finishing. Because I'm loose in here, I don't have any kind of resistance. I got to kind of firm it up so when I drive quick, I can hold myself still and yeah. keep my line. If I don't, this is loose, you're going to see this kind of happen. I'm going to open up, and now my line is no longer this way, it's getting more across and out of yeah. zone. As you can probably see through the video. Yeah. But uh, here's the drill pro tee as well. Yeah, drill pro tee. This is set up for a lefty, so you can see um, logo would be facing me here. Uh, this is set up in the inside outside position, so my front foot would be lined up with the outside tee. And then I could go to the outside pitch here, and to the inside pitch here, uh, back and forth, not having to move the tee around. For the insider setup, you take this out and move it to the front insert up here. Okay, that's going to be the same setup as your um, insider team that you just saw with Brian. For the righties, all you're going to do is switch that to the reds. Stand the same way. I would have the inside one here, outside here, back and forth. And for the insider tee, I'd go in the front red up here at the top. Front red right here. And then inside a rod in the back. Yeah. So yep. a very good tee to use here. We use this a lot when we get to kind of kids that have been through the program and they're getting more into getting ready for front toss, getting ready for that boot ball, um, trying to feel how we go from the outside pitch to the inside pitch. Yep. Y'all welcome, guys. I mean, like we say, I mean, we are in here in the thick of it with people, kids from seven all the way up to now some college kids or yeah. some high school Certainly. kids going to college. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we know what y'all are going through. We know the struggle sometimes about setting stuff up. We have to tell our kids to adjust all the time as far as them being too crowded to the plate or it being too far outside. So we know what y'all are struggling with. And, and that's, I mean, we're not just good at this kind of stuff just because it's come to us. We've learned it over being with these kids for a long period of time. So. Yeah, and, and one thing I would say, too, that 
it would be good to know, make sure that you're kind of trying to be this way because I believe firmly that this is the only reason we've seen the results that we've seen with some of these kids. Um, you have to really teach it. You have to teach them the why. Yeah. You can't – I mean, I, I've, I've watched kids – I mean, mainly going back to my high school coaching and seeing other coaches, how they handle their team, how they handle their players. There was a lot of – I mean, yeah. get, I mean, a lot of do this – do that. Get that result. Get the bat out there. Yeah. Keep your top hand on the bat. Finish with two hands. All this kind of stuff that's basically the end of the process. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever explained the in between, the why do I keep two hands on the bat, the why do I do this, the why do I do that. And when folks do try to explain the why, if you really sit down and think about it. It's most of the time based on a result. It's two hands on the yeah. bat when I'm early is getting me off the end of the bat. Yeah. Two hands on the bat when I'm late is getting me jammed. That's going to be a lot of the time what's happening when you're trying to do this. Mm -hmm. So being able to understand the actual functioning of the swing, why it functions the way it does, yeah. why are we really doing each drill, why do you need to drive your elbow more, not just get your knob past the ball. Yeah. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. If the kid doesn't know how to do that, you can say get the knob past the ball all you want to, and they're not going to get it past the ball. Well, the, the better knowledge they have about especially how their swing is functioning, we tell these we tell the kids all the time, y'all are the ones that are making adjustments in the game. Mm -hmm. Me and Jonathan will not be with you when you go play. So if you don't learn it to this extent and learn how it functions, so if I am a little early or I feel something off in my swing, I know where to go to correct it. If I don't learn these drills and what I'm actually doing to successfully do them, mm -hmm. I'm not going to have good results in the yeah. game because once I go in a bad habit, <laughs> my bad habit comes back out, I'm screwed because yeah. I don't know how to fix it. Yeah. And I'm going to be that way the whole rest of the game and just be mad because I have no idea how to fix it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's why it's so important. I know a lot of kids when they come here, they think we're uh, – and probably parents think we're perfectionists. No. We want we you are. to feel exactly when you're bad and know what to do to fix it. And I want you to be able to, to fix it. Yeah. I want you to be able to yeah. do this for and yourself. we're going to continue to do it because it works. And these kids learn. So, I mean, they're like sponges. And once they decide to commit, I mean, it's – they don't go back. It's, it's game over, it's man. Awesome. Yeah. It's game over. It's really awesome to see. There's not been one kid that has committed to it mm -hmm. that is not still in here. We have a guy, a kid, I don't know. If we didn't. We haven't mentioned this because this happened this week. But um, a guy's been here four times with us, oh, yeah. Gavin. Yeah. They're out there playing in a tournament, probably about to win state. His first home run this week, and all the games he's gone like yeah, three, two three hits, two four, three hits two every game. Four, a ton of RBIs, just hitting the ball all over the place, just based on some of the knowledge that we've given him, and he's just absorbed it, took it with him to go play, and has done great. Mm -hmm. And it brings us so much joy that we can have that effect. And well, it brings me joy yeah. to know that I mean, the kid did it for himself. He did. I mean, he uh -huh. coming here and he learned it, and he went out there and he did it. Yep. And that's what happens yeah. when you do it. That's what you got Congratulations, to do. dude. Yeah. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing is, I mean, your kids, you got to give them a little bit of time to figure it out. Yeah. You got to teach them the why. Once you taught them the why, now you got to let them kind of go to work. Yep. You got to let them take two or three swings and then tell them, up. fix it. Uh -huh. I mean, you know that was a bad swing. Don't let it continue yeah, to happen. You got to hold yourself yeah. accountable. I ain't going to be there all the time when you go hit, yeah. hit up the tee and stuff. You know you didn't drive your elbow. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I know we're over here jibber jabbering, guys. Y'all, y'all ask some questions. We just like to inform y'all about what how it's going, what's happening. Yeah, if y'all don't follow us on TikTok, go do that. Swing Shop Official. Yeah, we are taking TikTok by storm. Take the pressure off the top end. My number one thing, I'll, and I'll have to go back and look at your videos too, Jeff. Um, but and you tell me, yes or no? Do you feel your bat when you start your hands more down, or do you feel it more a little bit? You feel the weight like in your bottom hand. A lot of times, we'll get to the two hander and we'll put the two hander in our hand, and we get to where we feel the weight right here. And if you feel the weight in your top hand, guess which hand you're going to use to swing? Yep, top hand. So I got to really feel my bottom hand controlling the bat. I'll tell you something else you can do too. Take that two-hander and do a one-hand drill, just with a two-hander. Just hold the two-hander, big bat, and do a one-hand drill. It's going to move slower because it's heavier, but you're going to really feel if you're moving the right way. 
Yeah. A lot of times we'll have kids do that, and they'll go just like this and bang the tee up, mm-hmm. and they know that ain't the way I'm supposed to go. You got to really feel it go the same way as that one hand. Yeah. Really feel it go past your neck, pulling that back here. I'm not necessarily – I mean, you have to feel the pull, but you can't feel so much the pull and a twist. Yeah. It's got to be a straight pull all the way to the end. Almost like if you were standing here – going to take the knob and bust the wall down i'm going to just beat the wall to death all the way past the ball Mm -hmm. until that bat hits and a lot of that forcing happens i think too what you're talking about is i can't get myself to stop forcing it's because the what he's talking about with direction okay my direction with my top hand is still wanting to go this way way. to the Uh ball okay i got to really feel that ball both hands clear past it Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't want to feel my top hand kind of get to the ball and go towards it. I want to feel both my hands work past the ball, and then I release. Yeah. Okay. As mm-hmm. you can see, my front shoulder's not turning. It's just getting to that point of where I can get all the way through, extended. It's got to be loose. It's tight. I ain't going to get here. Yeah. And then I release it. And I think those things – and, and like, like we said, you, you know, okay, we told you you know what you're doing, just consistently – try to feel and work eventually you try over and over the same way yeah. same speed with the same mentality and concept it will come uh-huh. it's just about getting reps now we just got to really f- now i'm not talking about 100 reps i'm talking about the right 10 reps. or 15 very good quality reps really yeah. emphasizing that bottom hand and really trying to feel that top hand release out okay to the pitcher more so than the tee. yeah and if you continue to do it over and over it will come you just got to be patient with yourself yeah a lot of times you'll see me, I, I know I do it a lot where I stand here and I hold this bat like this. That's something good, I think, for folks to do is to go ahead and get yourself set up in that position mm-hmm. and hold them out there past the ball. Put your hands past the ball. You can see that my pinky, is, my palm is still facing up. I still got my pinky. You'll see a lot of times folks will be like this when they do it. Yeah, it's tight. I got to get here. Mm-hmm. I got to let that forearm go up, yeah, right get here. under that bat. Okay, here so that bat goes through flat and yeah. I don't get that when I go through that zone. Pushing. If your top hand is starting to do this too soon, all it's doing is throwing that barrel over mm-hmm. or throwing that barrel out mm-hmm. to the ball. So I've got to really feel my top hand work with this part of my hand, like I'm going to chop the ball off the tee mm-hmm. there, staying inside the ball mm-hmm. until that bat whips through. Yeah. Jim, <laughs> my guy, yeah. Martin. Yeah. Any other questions? That's a good one. That is such a good one. It's, it's, it happens it's to hard everybody. Thing to, yeah, it's a hard thing to overcome. It really is. It happens to everybody, too. It happens to all of us. Any others? Any yeah. other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Let's know. Yes, sir, brother. That's all we can do is keep at it. Yeah. Keep moving forward. I'm telling you, we're done with the – we just got through to one of our players. Uh, his name's Colin in here. He was he got so upset. Oh, he's getting straw. Man, some he's of these so, oh, so bad at stuff. And I'm just like, dude, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been playing? How long? Yeah, how long have you been yeah. swinging that way? Yeah, you've been – y'all don't understand. Some of these kids get so frustrated, but to explain to them, I've been playing this game five or six years and I have all these bad habits that have accumulated over those five or six years. Now I'm trying to break them. Yeah. It ain't going to happen it ain't gonna happen in overnight. two or three sessions or five or six days. It's, it's going to over, take some over time. many nights. Yeah. It's going to take many nights. It's going to take some time to break them and get back into a better habit. And kids just got to understand that. <laughs> um, do you use the one-hand trainer primarily for bottom hand, uh, no feet, no shoulders video? What about top hand? Yes, we do only use it for the bottom hand. We don't do a lot of top hand drills because we don't want top hand to get dominant. A lot of times you get with that top hand and you start getting this. Very dominant. You start getting yeah. that. You don't really have any pull, any resistance here to keep that bottom hand in front, keep that shoulder straight. Um, it also has been proven through science. Um, it's going recent, to probably start study. seeing some articles and things like that about it in the next year or two. Um, a lot of the folks that we deal with um, in physical therapy, um, strength and conditioning, uh, major league guys as well. Wes Hounds mentioned this in one of our live sessions a few months ago. The top hand drills, most of your kids are top hand dominant. They're right-handed hitters, right-handed throwers. 
So they're throwing, 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 trying to create all this velocity, trying to get my arm strength up, trying to make my arm stronger, trying to throw harder, and then I'm going to hit and I'm going to keep my arm all this stuff in my back. Continuing to work at all. Banging things, up man. my top hand, and you're just destroying all those good throwing muscles. It's just a lot of surgeries are showing up from kids that have too much stress being put on their throwing arm. Yeah. Okay. Do you only get one of these? Yeah. The top hand, we only use the two hander. Two handers where we start talking about the top hand and how the top hand works. Yeah. I want the bottom hand to still be there because the bottom hand is your direction. Yeah. Your top hand is just the level of the plane, the support of the bat through the zone. If my top hand's doing this, my bat's not on plane anymore. It may be, it may be like in line with the ball, mm -hmm. but this is in line with the ball, not this. Yep. So I've got to really feel the bottom hand still on the bat and use my top hand as I do this. Top oh, hand's yeah. only going to work that far. It's going to allow me to get more speed out of my bottom hand. Yep. Take a little bit of that weight off. Yep. That's yep. about it. <laughs> Again, I mean, we're not knocking top hand drills. But you, you do what you feel like they need to do. But at the same sense, we're telling you from experience, you don't have to do top hand drills to fix the top hand. You can do bottom hand drills with a two hand cam wood and really pay attention to what the barrel's doing. Is the bat pulling straight like this or is the bat swinging back here? That'll tell you how this fix the top hand. Yeah. My top hand should work just like this all the way down. Here, boom. There, boom. Driving that handle past the ball, knob, past the ball, accelerate my bottom hand. That's a good question. We'll take about uh, one or two more questions if we got any. <coughs> Excuse me. How to catch up to faster pitches. Um, you got to think about getting yourself in position a little sooner. A lot of times we get faster pitching, we try to be stronger. We try to match the speed. React. We try to just do too much. You really have to really react. Trust your body. Um, I was one of those when I faced faster pitching, I almost took away the inside part of the plate. Again, pitchers most of the time are going to throw outside. So if you'll just trust, I'm going to let the ball travel, and I'm going to hit a line drive over the second base's head, you'll fare out. Um, only thing that you really got to make sure it happens is your knee gets off in time. Faster pitching, a lot of times we get on deck, and we're trying to get our swing off in a hurry. Yeah. Well, now knowing what I know, knowing and understanding the swing like I do, knowing that my knee has to fire first, if my knee will fire in a full swing, then everything else is going to fire. Yeah. You're not going to not swing. Mm -hmm. You'll swing based off your eyes. So I've got to really feel myself on deck feeling myself get time for that move right there, that knee driving and that hip, make sure I can get that off before the ball reaches the plate. If I can get that off and be ready to get my hands past it, then I'm going to be in good shape. Yeah. Just be loose and just hit it. Yeah. Just hit it. The pitcher, it's the best thing uh, my head coach ever told me, the pitcher provides all the power. All the power is coming from the moving ball, the movement on the ball. Your swing, you put a ball sitting still, and you hit it with a full swing, it may go 80 miles an hour off the tee. If I throw this to you and you take the same swing and on the same ball, it's now going to go 92, yeah. 93, 94, uh -huh. just because of the speed of the ball moving. Mm -hmm. So don't let faster pitching put fear in your mind. Nope. It does that a lot. We try to get our top hand to it so fast. Just trust what you're doing. Trust what you're doing. Yep. I agree with that. And I, this is so, this is why it's so important sometimes that y'all watch the game a little bit because you'll understand a little bit more about what happens when he's talking about the hands trying to get out there quick. You'll see it. And what happens when a ball comes inside this fast and that happens, jam every time. A little blooper to the shortstop. Happened in the Notre Dame game the other day. Yeah. I mean, you'll see these those, that mentality, that swing, see how it plays with that. I got to really understand. feel yeah. that aggressiveness start right here, mm -hmm. knee in there. Really attacking the inside of the inside ball. Inside the ball. Yeah. If I can get there, that barrel, I promise you, mm -hmm. I promise you, the barrel's going to follow. Yeah. Promise you. Okay. And, again, if you know that, like, for example, if you know you're going to see some faster pitching over the next three, four, five days, week, two weeks, whatever, work on it. Yeah. Get in there and put more on the front toss. Throw that front toss a little harder. Yeah. Throw that thing and make them feel it. 
but you're going to have to, like he said, you need to react, not with this. With you got to react the right way. Out. I got to make sure everything gets inside that ball. My knee direction, my hip direction, and my hand direction. I can't, I can't feel like I'm being quick and then something's getting out away from me. I got to really feel everything stay compact inside that ball and just yep. quick. Just do less. Yeah. Do Load less. less. Yeah. Stride less. Do less. Swing less. Just drive. Right inside the ball. Let you know my bat run into if it. Y'all, if y'all been in this program for a long period of time, y'all understand when y'all's kids nice and smooth and that bat whips through, it jumps off the bat. You don't have to supply the strength yep. y'all think y'all need to supply that acceleration. That yeah, absolutely. So. Another good one there. Mm-hmm. Very good. This has been another great chat, guys. Yeah. We enjoy this every week. We really do. We really do. We hope this is benefiting you all. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope it's benefiting I mean, your players, number one, but yeah. I really do hope this benefits you. I hope this helps you have a better understanding of the swing. I hope this helps you be able to um, coach your players in a sense. We hear it all the time. I mean, kids just don't want to listen to me. And I get that. Sometimes parents do run into that where kids don't listen to daddy. They don't listen to mom anymore. Yeah. They just they, you got to find just, somebody else, put somebody else in their life so they'll listen to them say the same thing you've been trying to tell them for two weeks. Sometimes you got to do that. But if you can, if you can come across to them that you understand what you're talking about, mm-hmm. and I mean again, you talk to them about how they need to just drive that elbow and stay inside and let that barrel whip through, and then they go face that higher velocity and they do this right here and they get jammed and they come back and they don't want to listen, then just ask, them, did you drive your elbow? Yeah. Because as soon as they say no, boom, you got them. Now they know. Daddy knows what he's talking about. Daddy I, knows what he's talking about. Listen, y'all ain't the only one struggling. <laughs> Yeah, I had to deal with this with my son yeah. in a game. He just he was not listening to me. He wanted to hit home runs, try to hit the ball in the air. I was like, okay, go play. I want to give you a break. I'm gonna let you go play. Struck out the whole game. I'm like, you either gonna listen to me, try to tell you, or you gonna go through and yeah, strike out okay, and not have yeah. no fun. Yeah, so, if I mean, they had a bad game, I mean, you ain't gotta grill him. Them. Yeah, I hated it for him, yeah. but I was like, he's gonna have to learn. You ain't gotta grill him, but you gotta let him learn. You gotta let them learn. I mean, if you want to keep doing things the way you've been doing them, that is absolutely fine. But we've bought the Camwood program. We believe in the Camwood program. We've learned yeah. so much, and it makes so much sense about how this works. Why would you not want to give it a try? You ain't even tried this in a game. Yeah. Try this in a game and see if it doesn't work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Approach. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, do what Martin said. Get live virtual lessons yeah. with us. Uh-huh. Sign up, swingshopofficial.com. And email us if you have any questions. Be sure to go follow us on social media. Um, me and Brian were just talking before this because we've been dealing with some technical issues with Zoom. We're possibly getting ready to swing this live session over to YouTube. We're going to be doing this on our Swing Shop official YouTube channel. If you don't subscribe to our channel, go do that. Swing Shop official on YouTube. Click subscribe and stay tuned. We'll be meeting here for the next few weeks until we get our YouTube stuff lined up. But once we get it lined up and everything's working smoothly and the process is smooth to us, um, we'll move it all over to there. Yeah, I think so. So we appreciate you guys joining us. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out to the Canwood hotline or email us, text us, whatever the way is that you need to get a hold of us. And we wish you the best of luck. Y'all go get them this weekend. See you next week.